evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming tonight. This is EPUNI, the comic as continuity in our series on the cultures as continuum. Um, and last week, maybe some of you heard about it, we were supposed to have a lecture, but it got cancelled because there was um, the module was blocked with Christine Michaels. So we will let you know about this. It will probably be postponed. Uh, but thank you for coming tonight again. Um, um, so tonight we will talk about the cartoon um, as a genre, also as a particular function uh, in societies. Uh, Ipiuni is uh, tonight giving one of the first, perhaps the first, lecture on the history of the cartoon in India, that's what he said. And um, we will go through a history of 100 years, from the US to Europe, from the uh, Sunday funnies to the political cartoon problem. Um, and again, it's a, it's a very concrete, palpable reality. Most of us see those cartoons, those of Ipiuni, those of other cartoonists every day. It's also something more philosophical, more uh, symbolic, uh, between the still, the instantaneous image of the cartoon, which is fixed every day, but also creating a continuum, day after day, year after year, and we will see decade after decade, across space and across time. The cartoon is uh, playing an important uh, role in our public life. Uh, it is bringing in the newspaper a bit of of humor, a bit of wittiness, which actually are elements that we don't really find so much in the rest of the newspaper, while they actually convey a lot about reality. And uh, I saw an interview somewhere where Ipiuni was saying that he was once approached by uh, some uh, American uh, diplomats, some American diplomats who actually told him, you know, when we come to India, when we come to the country, the first thing we do is we check the cartoons, the political cartoons, because that's, that's the pulse of the country. And in just an instant, you get an idea of what is actually happening. So this is much more than humor, this is much more than art. This is uh, a rule which is at the forefront of journalism. Now, Ipiuni, uh, all of you know him through his work, is from uh, Palakkad in uh, Kerala, central Kerala, between um, uh, in the gap of the Western Ghat. Um, he was educated in sciences, but he started uh, as a cartoonist, first uh, as an amateur in the Shankar's Weekly in 1973, and then professionally with the Hindu in 1977, that's 37 years ago. Then with the Sunday Mail, then with the Economic Times, and finally the Indian Express Group in 1998, and he stayed with the Indian Express in 2008. He's the chief political cartoonist um, uh, in the newspaper now. Uh, he has written a few Malayalam um, graphic novels and a couple of books in English. Uh, Spices and Souls, A Bruner's Journey Through Kerala in 2001. And this year, something that you should buy for Christmas at least, <laughs> uh, Santa and the Scribes, The Making of Fort Kochi. This was published uh, earlier this year in September. Know. And this is, uh, you know, we're not supposed to promote him, but uh, <laughs> this is really delightful. This is, uh, so, um, a couple of, I mean, you, you might come across it in bookstores or online. There's also a video on YouTube, uh, some, some doodlings uh, from uh, around Kochi, going through its history, uh, the architecture, etc., the local culture, the people. Uh, this is really good. And you can find a video about it on YouTube. Um, the other part of the story of, uh, of Ipiuni and Lila is that actually Ipiuni uh, designed the logo of Lila, uh, which you can see here. So he designed, he designed it a couple of years ago. Uh, and this, the calligraphy was done by Narayana Batati. Um, so we were trying to do a number of things that was pretty specific and he managed to uh, satisfy everything. Uh, bending the vertical and the horizontal. 
geographically, as a representation of our beliefs also in terms of anonymization. The two directly dependent marks show that we are working with individuals, with particular communities, with specific issues, uh, but also the continuity of the shape, continuity, continuum, that's the, of course the theme of this year. Um, the central dot is a uh, symbol of the idea of an inner energy, also the sparkle of the luminous idea, uh, luminous idea for life appreciation is what LILA stands for. And uh, of course, uh, building on the vertical, building with the horizontal is also the curvature of nature. Um, that was pretty skillful of reading this. Uh, tonight we are having uh, Mr. Navikant uh, as the chair and moderator. Thank you for coming. Uh, so Navikant is uh, assistant professor in CSDS Center for the study of um, um, Developing societies in civil lines, um, really. He's a historian, multilingual, bilingual historian, and uh, writer, translator. He was teaching in various colleges of DU, the university, until 2000. And he has been with CSDS uh, ever since. Uh, he's been uh, particularly involved in the Salai uh, program, which is trying to look at urban forms uh, from an interdisciplinary background through uh, through multiplicity of media. He's the coordinator of a number of projects on uh, language, free software, and media. And this Indic language networks. You might have seen some of their works. Uh, his current history project is called Words in Motion Pictures, We're trying to bring together print, broadcast, and web to um, associate diverse media and make those works reach larger audiences. I'll be happy if everyone can say a few words about this. And finally, um, to start the discussion, which will be long and lively, hopefully, um, I, I would like to know who, uh, who you modeled the newspaper boy on. Because actually, if you look at the traits of the newspaper, it kind of looks like you. <laughs> but as a boy, as a boy. So I want, I want, and earlier he was saying, during, as we were preparing the room, that he's probably the eldest speaker who has been on the uh, speaking at one of our lectures. I don't know if that's true, but still. But if you know the lecture allows him to, like, kind of mold into the newspaper boy, I mean, you could actually gain all your youth by the end. So. Please go ahead. Thank you. <coughs> okay, uh, thanks Sam and Razia and everybody else at Leela Prison for uh, giving me this honor and uh, a pleasure uh, it is actually to sit beside, share the dais with Eknath Padmanabhan Unni, Unni for most of us who wake up uh, with his cartoons with the copy of in, uh, uh, Indian Express. I do most of the time. Sometimes I miss his cartoons, but uh, uh, every day, practically every day, he amuses me. And, you know, a uh, cartoonist's job, I'll, I'll take two minutes, two, three minutes. I, I don't want to stand between you and him. But how, uh, just to tell you how little I know about cartoons. And uh, historians are also partly to blame for that. Some historians have done some work on cartoons, uh, Indian cartoons. Professor Mushir Hassan, who is a prolific historian, as you know. He's written on practically everything, so cartoons also. And <coughs> some work, Hans Harder, one uh, Jail PhD, which Nasif cites. Nasif, who has just finished his uh, MPhil on cartoons. Uh, 
in modern India, especially with the work uh, Anwar. Anwar Rahman is the person, once again from Kerala, who worked for the Dawn and the Hindustan Times. As D.P. Unni himself knows, Kerala has got a lot to do with gardening culture right, in this country. And uh, in that seminar article he has written about it, you just search and read, and you probably already know. Parthamitta and other people have done a bit of work, but I would say that people like uh, Nasif would carry it forward. And my own uh, engagement with the cartoons and with Shankar's weekly with which uh, Unni Saab started his career was I was trying to look for some material on radio. Uh, radio especially its interface with cinema. And I found out that Shankar's weekly actually carried uh, consistently reviews of radio programs. Uh, and uh, apart from, and then I was taken in by those cartoons. So I started using it in various ways and on various platforms. I have started using it even though I don't understand cartooning much and I'm, one of the reasons why I'm here is I want to learn about it. But a cartoon, you know, I mean, we are talking about continuum and continuity. I think one can track it back to Neolithic cultures, right? Look at the first uh, uh, examples, first drawings of Neolithic uh, uh, art by uh, uh, artists in MP in the Neolithic way. Right? In a Neolithic age. And you can see that it is a caricature of what the artist is trying to draw. So, although, of course, it acquires a kind of depth, it acquires a kind of political sharpness. By the time we come to the Middle Ages, and a lot of that history is known, woodcuts, then block printing, etc., etc., and ultimately the print revolution happens, and cartooning emerges as part of our everyday life. Of course, it extends into the new digital domains as well, right? Animation, 3D animation. So Finding Nemo is very much part of that culture. And there are some beautiful, uh, small films division films about this culture. If you search their site, you'll find how it has evolved in India. Very little snippets, but you can you know, delve into that. What does a cartoonist do to me uh, as a reader? Uh, basically, it gives me a I'm fed up with most of the news that I read. So it stands, it, it gives me uh, another mirror to the same reality which has really dis disturbed me early in the morning. All these shrieking headlines that I hate to read. Here is one little box in one corner that tells me, and with that little boy of Onisa, right, who tells me, look, I am with you. I am standing in solidarity with you. I am looking at this headline tangentially. I am dissecting it. I am also looking at it from another perspective. It is not telling me only what Shekhar Gupta told me or Rajkamal Jha is telling me at the moment. It, it is another take. Uh, so it, it you know it, 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 it gives me solace, it gives me happiness, it gives me a lot of smiles, it also gives me laughter. Uh, and it does not only comment on the editorials, it does not comment only on the political headlines. It had a connection, for example, with cinema, as Unni Sahar himself knows. Sudhir Dar, another cartoonist I'm trying to read in a magazine called Shama and Sushma. Uh, brought out by Dehlavis, who were, were at the premiere of people in, uh, based in Delhi. They published these magazines. So Sudhir Dar actually uh, created a lot of cartoons on the basis of uh, uh, mukhas, of film songs. He used to take the first line of a film song, right, which was the current flavor, uh, and then would take it somewhere else, defamiliarize that. Uh, he put familiarize the song for all of us so that uh, you know he could take it to politics to culture whatever to human beings in general so I found that very very interesting that you know uh, uh, Sudhir Dar did it and then he also asked people to contribute like Shankar the institution trained whole lot of people including Kunmesa uh, I think we are also being trained 
politically, culturally, socially by these cartoons every day. And we, I'm glad we are all here to listen to Omni Sam. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. It's a big day. Am I audible? Uh, audible. Okay. I'm glad many people I know are here, but uh, somebody who need not have come has chosen to come. Let me thank her. That was nice. And there are people who have uh, uh, looked at my work and looked at Kato in very kindly. Uh, scholars, my own colleagues. I'm glad they are all here. I have a, an unusual problem, which is word count. <laughs> I have been asked to come with a prepared text and I have got about 3,500 words, which is what I do in one year. <laughs> so I have to I supposed to compass this into an evening and make sense. So, to begin with, I think that way. Let me draw courage from something even more wordy and more visual, more strikingly visual than daily cartoon. Uh, I'll show you that. This is Orwell's special edition of Animal Farms, brought out in 1995, uh, 50th anniversary edition. What was special about it was that it was illustrated by a great cartoonist called Raj Tedman, who was drawing for New Statesman in many other publications. Raj Tedman. Stedman. This is the 1995 50th anniversary edition. What is peculiar about this whole thing is that Stedman was a nine year old and this book was written in 1945. And the book itself had a difficult publishing history. It was rejected by, by a series of editors, including T.S. Eliot, before Orwell finally found a publisher. Finally, when it got published in 1945, it was just textual. It continued to be textual. Merely textual without any illustrations, several editions. In 1995, Stedman illustrated it. The irony is that Stedman, a very political person, Cartoonist. When he illustrated this Orwell's uh, classic, the sheer rationale of the whole book, which was as a satirical allegory on the Soviet system, was gone. It was redundant. Soviet Union had collapsed. So you find this peculiar situation of a contemporary cartoonist, a very sharp political cartoonist, looking at content that is clearly outdated. And he illustrated it. So what does this mean? I am trying to connect. Stedman brought to Orwell the, the immediacy, the sense of immediacy that comes with the card. And in a sense he updated the text. This is not to take anything away from Orwell, or this is not a lesson Orwell in any manner, because Or Orwell is a, a great writer, he wrote a classic, and like any true classic, it is open to adaptations. But so now you're looking at a situation where, where the text and the visual, text that was dated in a, in a certain sense of the term, because it had something to do with the Soviet Union. There was no Soviet Union left. There was no Berlin Wall. But you find the text and the visual working together to allude beyond the Soviet Union and the Berlin Wall to all oppressive state apparatus. So this kind of multiple continuities working together across half a century can happen through, this kind of connections can happen through the cartoon. It's a very unusual connection. So we are already probably into the third or fourth minute of this talk. We are already talking about 50 years of history and multiple streams of satire. And the cartoon is to double this restorer. This is just to tell you that the world of the cartoon is, is quite large. It's bigger than we think, it's more fluid than we think. 
So the question to ask, the first question I'm raising is, is the cartoon a standalone uh, rectangle? Is there anything like a standalone cartoon? Does the cartoon always connect to things that happen before or after? I tend to think that the cartoon can never be standalone. It is always part of the sequence. Probably the first cartoon that you ever saw in life must be the last standalone cartoon that you saw. Like, like all digital devices like your laptop or uh, your mobile, uh, there seems to be a kind of built-in clock in the cartoon, which gets triggered by the first use. And then now you start accumulating memory, uh, inconvenient memory, inconvenient to people in power, if it's a news cartoon. And then what you are actually looking at is an update on your impressions about either a personality or an institution. So a cartoon is an update, basically. It can, I don't, except for the Zionist of cartoons, uh, I can't think of a standalone cartoon. So the theme of the lecture, comic is continuity, is almost a given for us practitioners. But then we have to see how continuity gets uh, underlined in this business of cartoon. I will show you another cartoon by that tells you about, talks about updating. By Vijay. Vijay is a, Vijay is a, is a cartoon. And you should cartoon to always run the extra mile. And he not only giving you an update on the news, he's also giving you the template of the car update. How to update further news. And he's saying the old politics in the 80s, you can derive from uh, the previous decade. If you remember what went on then. These are not my random observations actually. This, this, uh, there are people who are cartoon historians who looked at this and said uh, that, that uh, cartoons are also a very natural, natural kind of a, uh, a device that can, that can work in any, any, any platform which can be uh, renewed. You know, any, any, anything that can be updated, uh, let's say news journals, newspapers, uh, internet. Tomorrow, if, if your cell phone becomes a carrier of news, a cartoon will fit into that. So, if you want to quote an authority on the subject, the uh, uh, professor of political communication, and, uh, and he and he was director of the Centre for Cartooning and Caricature in Kent. The centre had an archive of 90,000 cartoon originals, British cartoons. The gentleman's name is Professor Seymour Ewer. He says that the modern mass circulation newspaper is an actual home of the political cartoon. And the wrong press flourished along with it. In consumption, it has not changed since the pre-modern press. The cartoon remains what it was in the late 18th century. Since the late 18th century, styles might have changed, but the basic format of the cartoon has remained the same. And it has grown into the newspaper environment. And if you want to update, you can say web, web pages or anything that carries news, anything that carries information that you need to renew. But that platform can take a cut. This is also true of the comic strips, actually. He's talking about the political cartoon. This is true of the comic strips. The only thing is that the comic strips were not born in the 18th century, they came into vogue in the 19th century. It's slightly younger than we do. Now, <coughs> what does the media do with the cartoon? It's a, it's, the cartoon can adapt very well to a newspaper. So once the cartoon adapts to a newspaper, what does the newspaper do with it? Does it merely remit to entertain? Right from the beginning, the newspapers have used cartoons to, to promote uh, the brand itself. 
to win readers, to sustain readerships, to again underline continuity, run campaigns. It's all possible because cartoons underline continuity. This means that newspapers do this in broadly three ways. One is by slotting the cartoon. The cartoon gets slotted in the same place, either the front page, open page, edit page, back page. Or the same also the same cartoonist works for decades. You showcase the same cartoons, or you have two or three cartoons alternating. This is to showcase styles. The same style, the same kind of drawing style. That is sustained readership. That also establish uh, a certain identity and brand value. But more than the slot in the style, what has really helped uh, newspapers is characterization. This is the this is the core of the cartoon. How the cartoon creates characters. The comic character. Comic characters also come in all sizes and shapes, broadly in two streams. There is a purely fictionalized cartoon character like Lichman's Common Man, and the ones from comics like Dennis the Menace and Calvin and Hobbes. Then there are caricature versions of real life personalities, which we see in the regular news cartoon. You find Narendra Modi's caricature, you find Arun Jetli. Here, what happens is a little subtle. This caricaturing is it runs, uh, it's not copy, it's a distortion, but you must reflect the personality, you must have likeness of character. But at the same time, it's also a certain way of distancing from the man in flesh and blood. It's like a, it's like a hologram that is gone, haywire. And you can make, anything, make that hologram do anything you want, which the person would not do in public. So here I'll show you how three holograms work. No paper will carry the picture of the Indian president in the bathtub. So this cartoon became a classic. Half of Narasimha Rao's cabinet is quite in This is the leader of the ATS. As a campaign. He is charging the entire political class with genocide for boring voters to death. <laughs> so the point is that caricatures are, you know, caricatures have become more potent today uh, than ever before because of television. People think television is bad. I don't think television is very good for us cartoons in any case. <laughs> because they expose the readers all the time. So you work with a certain pre-existing familiarity. And then you don't have to do very much after that. But then for uh, the advent of satellite television, the master cartoons called David Lowe, some of for some more about it. Uh, World War II era, a classic great cartoonist. He did a caricature hard to beat in terms of harnessing familiarity. I'll show you the cartoon. Nazi tiger will even him up. The caricature that is not there. So you can you can understand how characterization works to, to create greater loyalties. Those readers have no difficulty figuring out. On the umbrella is an appeasement. The Nazi tiger is So this is how comic characters work in cartoon characters work in 
can as caricatures. But where the cartoon characters really reign is in the in the world of comics. The comic character which is and the recurring comic character according to cartoon historians in the West. It's a landmark in newspaper history. This, these characters made it possible for, for, for promoting newspapers uh, that created their own uh, industry. You know, the comics itself became, a, became an industry. But actually this happened, interestingly, uh, No, it doesn't matter. The recurring comic character you're talking about. The recurring comic character was born in the middle of a huge media war between two newspaper barons in the 1890s in New York. Joseph Pulitzer and Hearst, William Hearst. Uh, this is a huge uh, circulation war, all of circulation war. Each wanted monopoly, they wouldn't settle for each wouldn't settle for anything less than monopoly. Meanwhile, there was a young artist called Richard Oakcourt. He had drawn a uh, developed a character. There were cartoon characters earlier, but this was a character which which was used by Pulitzer's paper. And the character really became a huge hit. So that character it's today called the Yellow Kid. The Yellow Kid was definitely the first comic star uh, in cartoon. This, this Yellow Kid, Yellow Kid called this name because it wore a long, outsized uh, yellow shirt. Uh, and he, the, the function of the, the, the kid was to parody high society antics. This really caught on. And of course, the rest of the story is predictable. Uh, Hurst uh, hit back because, and he is the same man in which newspaper parents do even today. He ran at the rival's office and <laughs> on a chief stealing screen and got everybody across to his paper. Finally, all called himself worked across with the locate. But the story, what's interesting about the story is that. Again, I can quote from a cartoon historian who wrote a very, very readable and scholastic work called The Funnies, 100 Years of the American Comic Strip. The writer's name is Ron Goulart. Ron Goulart says that one of the side effects of the kids' impressive popularity was the birth of a whole new industry. That was the merchandising of comic characters, which over the years would make quite a few cartoons very wealthy and well known. The yellow kid began to appear <coughs> on all sorts of products and promotions and also on the stage. Both called himself contrast in a 1998 article that he was assigned to the idea of drawing nothing other than the yellow kid, which he had replicated in over 20,000 drawings for a million buttons, innumerable toys, and cigarette boxes and labels. I show you the yellow kid. The speech balloon was not there at the time. So they texted the speech into the t shirt. <laughs> into the night shirt, actually, long outsized night shirt. Anyway, comics rose fast into a thriving industry and got branded as America's national art form. The, the point is that the basic business ideas that went into this success story, like merchandising, licensing and so on, were actually born with the yellow kid, with the comic characters. I mean, these ideas are as old as the, as the comics. Commerce was the kid's unseen twin. Mainstream syndicated comics turned out to be a rewarding career for good cartoonists in the US and became a big grosser for, for the really bright ones. 
and the early stars of this profession, the Charles Solson, created the peanut strip and Hank Ketchan did it. The merchant that, who called himself the merchant of the Dennis, the menace. That's the sort of act. Created Dennis and the whole family and neighbor. Interestingly, neither, they were hugely successful, but neither was thankfully blinded by success. Schultz remained so sensitive that he constantly steered his cast of characters, children, away from any unsafe situation. When he wanted to put his children, child characters, Charlie Brown, Lucy and Sally, on a curb, he drew it sufficiently low so that the kids won't fall and hurt themselves. Even pictorially, he didn't want to create an unsafe situation. Ketchum was no less protective of his characters. This is Schultz. Because in, I think he was already a millionaire in the 60s, whose syndication and merchandising. Very successful but very sensitive. Uh, maintained his integrity right through. kind of work that go through the making of a comic strip. It's not casually done. You see that the channel created Dennis virtually laid out the entire neighborhood that people are going to have the houses of land, characters are completely planned. Each character movement, spatial configurations. The front yard, back yard of Wilson's house. Everything is planned. The entire neighborhood, yes, I've seen sketch of his. We have done the entire imagined neighborhood of the Mitchell family. That apart, Ketchum took this uh, Dennis and the neighborhood. He, he showed very, very, a very interesting trend, started a trend that later deepened in comics. He factored in social changes. I think it was the first panel cartoons to do social cartoons. He didn't do it to make uh, any social commentary or come make social humor. He did that to maintain acceptable continuities in the lifestyle of characters. He didn't want his characters to leap out of the frame. Here in his autobiography, <coughs> Ketchum says, I have refrained from any opulence or irresponsibility, making sure the Mitchell family owned a car which was always about three years old, that they never traveled by air, and I didn't give them an electric dishwasher or color television until the early 70s. Once crude face became common, I think he sent the family on a, on a flight which I think Dennis enjoyed most of all, not as co-passengers of the world. <laughs> there are a lot of fun at expense. Now we come to a slightly more mature phase of cartoon. Uh, comic comics. The next generation of American comic artists, Julius Pfeiffer, Gary Trudeau, and Bill Watterson. Bill Watterson is slightly younger. Julius Pfeiffer is I mean, you can't, I, I just show what he has done. He is Pfeiffer and Trudeau in one frame. You can see the sequential cartoons which appear the week on the last page of the, the Shankar's Weekly. Shankar's reproduced Pfeiffer on the last page. On the left. No, no, no borders, nothing. Sequence is created to, to just black, white and light. Great rhythm, great politics, some of the finest powerful cartoons in Vietnam was done by the strip cartoonist. He was a comic strip artist, not a political cartoonist. 
same thing about Trudeau. Trudeau was... Trudeau did a regular, regular uh, comic strip, which eventually became comedy. It was a campus strip. The characters moved to Washington and became politics. Then Bill Watterson, we all know, Catherine and Hawks. Bill Watterson is an interesting background. He, he was doing editorial cartooning, political cartooning for many years. Then he switched to uh, strip cartooning. And interestingly, all of them, especially Gary Trudeau and Pfeiffer, they were firmly anchored in the counterculture of the 60s and 70s. And they didn't need any lessons in subversion and defiance. Any commercial success they were able to transcend and remain creative, despite the kind of acclaim they got, critical acclaim in the days of Trudeau. Trudeau was interested in the first two, first comic strip artist to get a Pulitzer for ritual cartoon, which was again an acknowledgement of the fact that the comics are known as political. Another interesting thing about Trudeau, Trudeau's characters aged. They were not ageless characters like Dennis or Charlie Brown. They aged over a period of time. And that made the strip more lifelike. He was able to amplify social comment, that kind of a thing. He could trace the past, bring people from, from let's say, the last decade, after a gap of five or six years. He could do all that. He operated in the real, real time uh, framework. That gave it another kind of social political edge. For us Malayalis, this is not unusual because we are seeing Aravindan do the same thing ten years before the World Food was started in 1961. He ran a serial for 13 years in the back page of the movie. Her characters aged, and in retrospect, the whole thing looks like a graphic novel. The canvas, I mean, ten years of Kerala's social history. A good part of that you can see in that work. The point is that cartoon is here and abroad. Well, uh, we're doing conventional and as well as unconventional. Uh, they're doing conventional styles, they were doing conventional and unconventional, doing trying or unconventional methods. But they were they were recording the flow of time. They were actually tracking events. They were not standalone. I don't think any one of them at this in this space from the 60s to 90s, even in the in the West, created a completely imaginary kind of a world. Most of those cartoonist spaces can be traced to actual social or political events. When we come closer to, to our own comic characters, I include Richmond's common man, I go to Congressman, Regina the Puri's new song, Mario's Fonseca. They're all considerably <coughs> uh, powerful comic characters. We are not tapped, uh, I mean, except Richmond's common man. No other comic characters have been tapped commercially in India. But they all, one, one good thing about them is that they have all remained true to form, they have remained very distinctive. They have commented on, uh, on national affairs in, in ways very different. That if you look at uh, Abu's characters, Abu came back from London in 1961 and he was cartooning till the leave the express 1981, I think, for 10 years, 69 to 81. 10, 11 years, he ran the private view. Lexman was there even before him, continued after. So if you look at the 10, 11 years, you find Lexman's character as well as Abu's characters. They were commenting on national affairs in ways very different in terms of style, graphics, in terms of content, accent, emphasis. So the point is that even a country like which refused to, you know, we had no means of nurturing comics as an industry. We created a variety of very powerful comic characters. 
this again uh, as in the US our own comic actors sustain continuity, expand the creative space uh, and privilege specific identities rather than clones. Could well be that subliminal pluralistic impulses are playing out in the making and the viewing of the cartoon. Basically there are democratic impulses. There are so many clones of Lichman which editors wanted to impose on cartoons. It will work. Finally, it's a totally different character that, that comes into being. The clones disappear. So no formula works here. No stock ideas seem to work. It's very interesting. It's a genuine variety even in an environment which did not commercially or institutionally support the cartoon. Building cartoons only uh, avenue is finding work in the newspaper or the magazine. There's no extra institutional support. Only now some some research and some study, uh, some courses in higher uh, levels, I think, history and all that, certainly. But still, by and large, the, 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 if you look at the character of the cartoon here and in the US, so our sample size might be smaller, even as good as the at our best. And truly democratic. A lot of variety. Uh, it functions more to the same way, carried out more to the same function of recording time, maintaining continuities, uh, sustaining characters, uh, articulating themes which grew increasingly social and political. Now, I think. Let us see where we are. This is how I have more traveled. We started from cartoon as a as a device for updating. We went into how it found a news platform, recurring news platform. And how it was used as a device for sustaining readers, promoting brands, broadly in three ways, slotting, style and character. When we got into caricatures and comic characters, both according to me are characters. When they are working, born with, with a commercial cloud, and so much in kitchen, successful, very sensitive, five foreign children, tending to be political, Abu Rashman, Freddy, the Puding, and there are no Now, by the end of the 20th century, some American cartoon historians say that for 50 years, the American comic strip exists, not, not the political cartoon. American comic strip covered almost every aspect of social and political life in the US. And almost every sensitive issue, from feminism to the Holocaust. This is more or less true of India too. In any case, we don't have comics. Most of our comic characters were in the realm of news, part of our political cartoons. So they did they, they what they could. The point is that in the early 21st century, I think we are getting into a slightly different trend, or the trend is changing probably. How, how it is changing, I can't. Yeah, this. So far we have tested the cartoon when there is continuity, as an agent of continuity. Cartoon is also a medium of inversion. The true test of a cartoon is to see what it does when continuity breaks down. If you have to find out whether the cartoon is a true agent of continuity, the real test would be to test the cartoon when there is no continuity, when there is a major breakdown. So I am trying to look at three three breakdowns from, from the not so distant past. First was the emergency, 1975. I think everybody here must be knowing about the national emergency. Indira Gandhi government declared internal emergency, suspending all victims of Nehruvian democracy. Opposition leaders were in jail. 
It was so censored. The constitution was in a limbo. The apex court decreed that citizen has no right to life under such extraordinary circumstances. <laughs> it made me <laughs> Naturally, the cartoon is not hit most of all in journalism because cartoon is again a medium that is very difficult to say on the one hand, on the other hand. So hardly one hand. <laughs> we got it even more because we had a traditional cartoon that was very outspoken, very, very uh, up, upright, you know, you know, very, uh, very powerful. Uh, this, is, this is the Shankar School of Cartoon. And we were inspired by liberal cartoons like David Lowe. To her blog, she got the major, she got the major influences of cartooning on all the stalwarts from Shankar, Kutti, uh, Lakshman, Abu. They will mention these names. They were either Pakka liberals, very strong people, very strong views, which they expressed very powerfully. So that is the school of cartooning that we were used to. We were not used to cartooning as like some Eastern East European cartoonists who were forced to do very oblique. Sadistic kind of cartooning in the Eastern Bloc and the Communists or, or Greece under the other generals. They had good cartooning. I'm not saying it's bad, but we didn't know anything about ambiguous cartooning. So these fellows were actually uh, forced to either, either tone down, do, choose innocuous subjects or retire. And one casualty was the Shankar Sweetie. Shankar Sweetie folded up within months of the emergency. Actually, two practitioners who saw this coming, this national breakdown coming, more, more than any journalist, writing journalist. Among the writing journalists, I can only think of Mulgonkar, that's Mulgonkar who knew that this country was headed for a real crisis. Two practitioners knew this was coming, the Rajendra Puri and Ravi Vijay. If you look at the cartoons in 1973-74, the cartoons consistently voiced concern over the deepening constitutional crisis. Nothing less, no less. Not just bad politics happening here and there. They knew that this was leading up to a major breakdown. Of course, both stopped political cartooning after emergency was declared. Police have went into and to do whatever politics he could do under the circumstances. We came to treat it to his world of writing and googling. In 1977, when people voted out Mrs. Gandhi, cartoonists came back. This time, of course, with a new generation. The generation shift happened at that time. We all came in at that time roughly. Sudhir so Thailand, Ravi Shankar, Ajit Mahan and me. Many of us came into cartooning novelists at that time, 77, 78, 79. In the new breed, Avi Shankar was the quickest to arrive. He seemed to mature almost, you know, under your very eyes, visibly, into a very adversarial, very combative cartoonist. We are trying to find out how this happened. Normally, it's a gradualist process. You learn from masters, slowly you go. And here was this game just shot up. His craft seemed to mature very fast. His domain, political domain, suddenly became very, very wide and very, very mature. How did this happen? My own view is that he, his drawing looked like Vijayans in the early, early, early years. Because he outdrew it. This was bound to happen. We all imitate somebody and then build up, move away. What happened in the case of Ravi Shankar was that he not only uh, invited Vijayan, which we all of us did, we invited Vijayan Abu uh, Rajinder Puriya. He not only invited Vijayan in its cerebral in cerebral terms. I think he left, he imbibed in emotion. Because if you look at his work, there is emotional season for 25, 22 year old. Then he drew on, on uh, Indira Gandhi. It seemed as though 40 or 50 year old was drawing because 
he seemed to bring in resonances that only a cartoonist who actually knew in the days of Nehru could have. This, this kind of emotional connect which he developed, his learning curve was stronger than his cartooning curve. The amazing uh, way he imbibed uh, that, that domain, and largely from Vijay. No, no, I am talking about Ravi Shankar. Ravi Shankar and Vijay. This is uncle and nephew, that apart. We, we, were, we had the same level of exposure to Vijayan's work. But what he got out of Vijayan, none of us got. We, we, got, we got the cerebral, uh, you know, breadth and horizon and the way he connected and all that. But we didn't get Vijayan's emotional. We couldn't have. See, somebody, for instance, Vijayan was a fellow traveler on the left. He got disillusioned with the left. So the way he cartooned, he always, it had lots of resonances that went with those times, late 50s. Czechoslovakia, Poland, the Soviet Union getting into Czechoslovakia and all that kind of stuff. How would somebody who is about 30 years younger, how, how do you acquire that emotional uh, ambience? Maybe was able to do it. The, the long and short of it is that, when, <coughs> see, when the Indian Express, edited by Arun Shauri, decided to take on Rajiv Gandhi after the offer scam was made public, became a scam. Devishinder was the cartoonist. And he was able to target, for the first time in India, campaign cartooning was happening. And he was able to target Rajiv Gandhi day after day, which would have normally bored the worst critic of that, uh, Rajiv Gandhi. Because it's a, it's a small canvas medium. If day after day, if you pick on somebody, you, you, there's a fatigue. But he was able to do it with no fatigue. He was able to improvise and... He was able to improvise and carry on. Uh, he brought a lot of fun and frolic and, and satire and biting wit into Cartoons, they are, he sustained it for, they sustained, the two of them, they sustained this campaign for nearly two years. And the readers were not tired. That's the point. The, the point I am making is that, look at what happened. See, this whole campaign, for the first time happening in the country, which wouldn't have happened if there had been no emergency. This is my, my theory. This was not just a reaction to Rajiv Gandhi making mistakes. This was a reaction to Mrs. Gandhi having made a major mistake, there was a crisis of faith. So Rajiv Gandhi's credibility fell even more sharply. That is what reflected, what reflected in the cartoons. And you know, some people, in those days, I, I remember, you know, people were saying it's like a hard Bollywood uh, revenge drama that punished some Rajiv for the mother in the lapses. I mean, this cartoon had a huge impact at the time. Day after day, people were looking for the cartoon. You see what happened again, look at it in perspective. Within a decade of the censor stamping out the cartoon, first time it happened in India, the rectangle was back with the vengeance. When discontinuity happens, cartoon reconnects with the vengeance. Really, we saw continuity happening. Things happened very smoothly, almost imperceptibly. Nobody would have noticed how Ketchan updated his work when he gave the family a television set, when he gave the family a dishwasher. None of us noticed. Continuity was born into it almost unseen. Here, the cartoon does reconnect. Of course, if the, if the tyranny had continued, the cartoonist would have... It's a fragile medium. It could have disappeared altogether. I'm not ruling out the possibility. This is an instance that didn't happen. It came back. But then it comes back with a vengeance. Now I'm going into the second, second breakdown. Yeah, I look and then come to the issue. On December 6, 1992, in Ayodhya, the Babri Masjid was demolished. 
So the result of political mobilization by a party very much a beneficiary of parliamentary politics. This belief turned to anger and large sections of the media reflected this. Sadan and Menon then added it in the Economic Times, commented at length on the cartoons that followed the fall of the mosque. He sees in this face, Sadan, the resurrection of the cartoons as an independent and autonomous agent within the print media. He goes on. Earlier editors tended to treat cartoons as some sort of downgraded colonies whose task was to provide relief. Today the cartoonist's voice is a location and a resonance all its own and is even proving to be ahead of editorial perceptions. The manner of the cartoons took on communities in the three-month period post December 6, 1992 and even later will remain a minor saga of all times. As 1993 drew to a close, it is time to look back. Sadhana and his team at Economic Times brought out a telling art page, an annual year and art page, that presented a selection of cartoons on Ayodhya from news publications all over the country. I was a colleague of Sadhana at the time. I was witness to how they put that page together. The multiple voices on that page, which each cartoon is articulated, and the entire page, the multiple voices held almost like the trust out nation at the time, 1993, after this It was almost like a, like a, like a cartographer is India, it was a cartoon is India, the whole page. I tried to get an image of the page, I couldn't. And this went on to a very, very brilliant title, and the line over to the world, that was Sadan's assessment of that year. He said, the cartoon is over to the writer, journalist, in, in expressing what was really going on. This time, when Vishenga was in the room, the entire fraternity of cartooning was with him in this conflict. Through the weeks and months of this collective campaign, cartoon stayed perfectly focused. I mean, we, none of us, I was also part of this game. We didn't compare notes. But Almost looked as though we were working like an orchestra, which is a bad thing or a good thing, I don't know. But one, another interesting thing that happened in the space is uh, that cartoons started mining icons from the past, uh, from history, mythology, from the classics, characters from classics, mythological figures, from history, characters. Hitler, Gandhi. I mean, this probably suggested that, that what was happening was not immediate uh, political ups and downs, but historical sweeps, which people were really worried about, whether we would go back by 50 years or move ahead. So I will show you some of these icons. It's very interesting the way the icons play out. In one month flat, in December 92, middle of December 92 to January, you see a very mild mannered, suggestive cartoons like Abu. He came out with a very vivid animal. So normally he couldn't do. Followed again by what he called Sri Frankenstein. And then, of course, Gandhi departing from the jungle Bhumi. Gandhiji, interestingly, is still our best early modern system. Whenever, whenever things go terribly wrong, the father of the nation makes an appearance in cartoons. And when he makes a consistent appearance or repeat appearances, rest assured that there is a huge problem underneath the surface. <laughs> One way of finding out that the country is going rapidly down. You see, more Gandhi cartoons in two months, I think we are almost <laughs> so Gandhiji isn't the only one to make uh, such anachronistic appearances in cartoons. There's a classic instance of Abraham Lincoln uh, in a Bill Morgan cartoon. We briefly go into that and then I can go.
This is a classic. Absolute classic. This cartoon is drawn by Bill Morton for Chicago Sun Times. On November 22, 1963, the day President Kennedy was assassinated. That Maldin had gone home, finished his weekend cartoons, was heading home uh, when he got the news, rushed back to the office, studio, and drew this cartoon. And I'll quote him from this autobiography. Bill Maldin says, I started the drawing at 2.15 in the afternoon, finished at 3 o'clock. The fastest I had ever worked. I almost threw it away because I couldn't get the hair right. No matter what I did with it, it looked more like Kennedy hair than Lincoln hair. So Chicago Sun-Times and Rivers did a record job, so did the press room. The first edition was on the street at 4.45 p.m. The cartoon was on the back page, unusually. Probably the rest of the page was all done. And later, Martin says he was told that most Chicago news dealers, vendors, sold the paper back side up, back side up. <laughs> the cartoon sold the paper. So since the 1960s, the star shooting assassin, the kind that kills, uh, assassinates the president, oh, the star shooting assassin is scaled up. Today, Turk has become a huge project. They can target individuals, but newspapers call high value individuals. I don't know who are low value individuals. <laughs> okay. Monuments, old and new. A heritage mosque went in Ayodhya. A mob, you know, mob, faceless mob. Turk can transform itself into a faceless mob and they can get a mosque, a monist. And before long, skyscrapers in New York. This is the third breakdown, third and final breakdown, hopefully, that we should talk about. Two airplanes crashed into New York's World Trade Center on September 11, 2001. One eyewitness was Art Spiegelman. Spiegelman, the well-known creator of, of a park-breaking graphic novel called Mouse, a survivor's tale. It is a classic novel on his father, who was a Holocaust survivor. It's available in the two-part classic. Spiegelman was a resident of Lower Manhattan. He saw the North Tower vaporize right before his eyes. Just went up in smoke. And he says the pain was unbearable. The pain just wouldn't go away. He tried everything, including music. Nothing was working. Finally, he combed with his extended trauma for through three long years and produced a graphic narrative called In the Shadow of No Towers. This is one part of a page. The pages are big. They have very, very unconventional book, even by comic book standards. The book has thick, thick pages of cardstock, cardboard pages, which is a little depth of length, breadth, and little depth. They are meant to suggest the outsized towers that fell. Also, in another sense, they suggested the broadsheets that printed the early comics in the 1910-20. The masterly defiance of convention, Spiegelman makes us reflect in textual passages and archival comic clips with rewritten speech values. Some of the pages you will find this writing, pure writing, beautiful writing, two pages, followed by old comics, archival comics. Where he would have changed, rewritten the speech balloons, and slightly changed characters here and there. The old bringing up father, Jigs, Maggie, and all. Finally, we find Maggie appearing in the last frame as a terrorist with a beard. To absolutely bizarre stuff he did with it. Very powerful, very powerful. Not an organic narrative, but a very, very accessible narrative. You would first think it's all in the jungle, but when you start reading, it communicates. Again, Spiegel reminds you that Spiegel reminds you that Brown Seaver was just two blocks and about a hundred years away from where Joseph Phillips and William Randolph first fought the legendary media war. Right there. 
The collateral gain was a convict too. Ms. Spiegelman's words, white and unpretentious ephemera from the optimistic dawn of the 20th century. That's how we describe the comics. Incidentally, that was his only comfort in those three years to cope with, 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 uh, with uh, what he saw. The visual assault, the sheer assault of the tower collapse. He says, as I said, he says, even music didn't work in the aftermath of that. Uh, so the 20th century ended with comics approaching the editorial cartoon as we saw. Early 21st century, Spiegelman, according to me, has clearly overtaken the cartoon. Clearly overtaken the political cartoon. He is a comic creator, which in India would be seen as a new art. He's, again, if you look into his, his, um, his narrative, the narrative that he develops in this work, this narrative was born out of his refusal to choose between two, two choices, you know, two easy <coughs> choices between the terrorizing Al-Qaeda and his own government that manipulated the trauma. He, he didn't know which was worse. So, so he, he, he wouldn't have drawn a cartoon attacking Osama one day and Bush the other day. He, he, didn't, he didn't find it uh, possible even. So, such binaries frustrate even regular cartoons like us here in India. How do you sit for the lesson of the youth in Iran? That's what was in sharp contrast. Cartoon is an art of sharp contrast. Light and dark, black and white, good and bad, up and down. These are devices that we constantly use. This is virtually the language, the vocabulary of the cartoons. This is a vocabulary of sharp contrast. So how do you how do you keep on you know uh, setting for the lesser of the evils when you are offered a binary or the thing? To escape a debate reduced to binaries, Spiegelman could go back to archival cartoons. He had the luxury to go back to archival cartoons. We in India are losing even that. On May 11, 2012, the country's HRD Minister Kapil Sibir told Parliament. He quote, I found that the number of cartoons are inappropriate. A review of all textbooks of political science, as well as a general review of all books of NCERT, should be undertaken to ensure that inappropriate material is excluded from these textbooks. The court ends mercifully. He didn't go on. <laughs> he would have, could have turned to cinema and said that Satyatri is inappropriate. He would have said is on an inappropriate spree, he didn't know that. <laughs> that ministerial exertion was the response to a remarkable collective certainty that dubbed the particular Shankar cartoon as anti and And the entire parliament, a whole group of people, many writers, filmmakers, everybody said with one voice that an archival cartoon of Shankar drawn 75 years ago was clearly, unequivocally anti and I don't know how such such insight can happen in the history of human civilization. This must be quite a remarkable insight. Nobody had doubts about it. Poets had no doubt about it. Writers had no doubt about it. Filmmakers, some of them had no doubt about it. Of course, the parliament had absolutely no doubt about it. <laughs> and this was 75 years ago. Many of them didn't even know Shankar from, from Adam. I don't know how many of them knew Ambedkar. What was an offer was a absolutely neat binary. You you have to choose between one offensive archival cartoon and the offended legal repute. So you could only do one of these. Before you could bat an eyelid, the binary carried like cancer to pit all archival cartoons in unassailable politics. That's why he threw out all cartoons. He didn't throw out a single cartoon. He, he threw out every cartoon from textbooks. From, textbook, from every textbook. And what, what have we got at the end of it all? The only parliament whose records mention cartoons is inappropriate material. Check our, it's supposed to be the worst, biggest democracy. Check our parliamentary records. They have a great description of the cartoon. 
as inappropriate, I think. Five countries are charged with minister. Who was our first education minister? Maulana Abdul Kalam was such a Country's first education minister. Today, downstairs. <laughs> Uh, this, is the, this is the tradition we have got. And uh, the point is that, you know, the, the people who are called inappropriate material and actually thrown out included Shankar, Lakshman, Kutti, Mario, Abu. Some of them were honored by the state with Padma Bhushan's, Padma Bhushan's, Padma Bhushan's, Padma Bhushan's, Padma In any case, they, they are they're out of textbooks, they are out of favor. This is archive and cartoon, 75, 80 years old. What will happen to contemporary cartoon? I have no idea. Probably we will get, uh, we will not get enough attention. We can escape. Till we become 75 years old. Work. Like speaking, when our cartoonists will someday retrieve the veterans from the ministerial bin. I think this will have to be done at some point. That the last great act of continuity probably in the world of Indian comic will be a bright young cartoonist, protruding the work of these masters and <coughs> redefining them, re-energizing them, putting them back in the, in the public contemporary space with a power which no minister can can handle, can wish away. That would be the true celebration of Indian public as continuity. Thank you. that you create. We can only copy, we are not as artistic as you are, but we will we'll keep doing that. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Questions, comments? Subhashji, you can introduce yourself. Oh, my name is Subhash. Uh, my name is Subhash Varma. From today onwards, I'm going to look at the word funny very seriously. From today on, I'm going to look at the word funny very seriously. Probably it will stand for me from today like famous Pune. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. And thank you for taking us through that journey and especially the, uh, the power with which uh, a small dot or a line can convey. What I would get to learn that it's very different uh, when you draw a cartoon and you draw a crooked thing, uh, probably it must have uh, all those laugh lines or recognizable features of the face when you draw a caricature. Uh, uh, would you kind of illustrate that? Okay. Yeah. 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 Only thing is that it's uh, it, it, it is it's not a, as I said it is a it's a suitable distancing from the from the actual person in life in that it is a very with the character with the figure uh, if you distort the face for instance people say that somebody is not having a distant nose which is wrong if you elongate the nose there are many other things that you don't balance. So the face holds the face. Uh, it's a very subtle art. You, you can make out in the way Abu, Abu does it. Uh, also, this is a great challenge for Indians. The Indian cartoonist has to be a very good caricature to be in the business. Whereas in the US, you can manage the 10, character, 10 caricatures in five years, so four years, three months, three years. We can't do that in India. We can do that in a wide ethnic variety. Yeah, this 30, 30, 
there it is in India. Those are the 60, 70 cities. One day you draw a face from Asa and the North East, and the day from Tamil Nadu. Ethnically very different. So you must have a strategy of drawing, which is very inclusive. The words are all democratic. The countries have to be even graphically democratic. How long does it take to get into the uh, once you identify the character and you start drawing it? Uh, I understand it must be taking a lot of time. Say, for instance, when this pandemic has come into existence, the new government, and you have so many new politicians whom you have never seen. Partner is, no? Partner is. The Maharashtra is. Yes, it is. But, I am not the one who is a <laughs> uh, you identified uh, three breakdowns or discontinuities and uh, wish that let this be the last one, the third one. But uh, at this stage, where your fellow people in the newspaper office, the journalists, are going on a selfie spree with the like uh, prime minister. Can you really wish away this discontinuity in 2014? Uh, you said like with uh, no Nehru, no mosque, and no towers. There were three breakdowns, yeah, and uh, thought that you know maybe you know we shouldn't have a discontinuity in the cartoon tradition of continuity, engagement. No, the the comic continuity. Yeah, the discontinuity is not merely in the world of projects. That is the that is the result of something that's happening outside. So that's why I said the cartoon constantly causes as reflective the passage of time. The cartoon is updated in this. Reflective in this. In your sequence. Yeah. So what is happening? Why why does the discontinuity in cartoon? Because something else is broken down. Why the cartoon is not able to make a normal choice? I mean, supposing uh, there, there is uh, like World War II, Hitler hits the uh, uh, New York Towers, World Trade Center. The target is very clear for me to know. They do a clear target, Hitler passes 50 years after that. You have unseen terror. But you can't even conceptualize, you can't even visualize. We can't picture like that. And then there's a president called Bush who manipulates this trauma and public uh, insecurity to his kind of politics. That, that is the way. So, uh, if I can just improve, that's the final uh, clarification. Uh, like, uh, in, this, uh, in this current scenario where you have a um, prime minister who's going to gag people in a different way and with that kind of majoritarianism. How do you see the task of the cartoonist in 2014? That's the precise question I wanted and to ask. I seek the help of Antonio uh, White. <laughs> can I, uh, can I, can I uh, add uh, no, something to that? No, no, okay. no, my, my only point is that it does not, I don't want to subscribe to the prophecy. It does not happen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it does not happen in the kind of business game in the I hope it doesn't. Yeah, uh, I hear from you know my uh, journalist friends that they did certain stories uh, actually commissioned by the, their editors, and they finally don't see the light of the day. Uh, that uh, has this ever happened in the history of cartooning in general, or with you? Cartoons, or mixed cartoons. Yeah. There are always happened. There are collections of censored cartoons, killed cartoons. Characters happen. And it has happened. Oh, yes, always happened. Not very much in the last 20, 30 years. Either I have become very pliable. Bunchy cartoons. Or a lot of questions.
You can, you can see technology allows you to update the communities. I update my cartoons. If uh, God forbid something happens now, 8 30, I will go back and redo my cartoons. If the faculty decides to join the Congress party or something, <laughs> you can you can do it with technology. You can scan it fast and send it email. Email the images are handled by by graphic people directly. I mean, they process into the paper also. Even earlier, uh, in, in the days of the Hindu, I have drawn on the Brahmin. You can do that on the page, but. But it's, it's, it's not, I see, it's, it's some, some arbitrary editor goes on chucking cartoons and I think we get the spirit of this job. It's not work. You've always been referring to the uh, US cartoons and the Indian ones. You made no reference to the UK and the punch. Yeah, see, the, the, yeah, no, this, this is thematic lecture. I was only thinking about talking about continuity. I would have gone on for another three hours. I mean, in UK, I told you that the gentleman I quoted, uh, Dr. Seymour yes. Collins, you know, he, he heads, apart from his department of government, he was professor of government at Kent University. He was also heading the Institute of Cartography and Caricature. There was 90,000 originals of British cartoons. And British cartoons, I did refer to, I told uh, David Law. Oh, the point is, Jack, Japan has cartoons. You are right, Japan has cartoons. Singapore, Malaysia, there's a cartoon called that. The brilliant cartoons. But a cartoon is Korea has the rich couple of cartoons. Even lesser democracies are cartoons. China has cartoons. Actually, I've seen the Chinese cartoons. <laughs> oh, my, my question is also on this uh, we break down the points of this uh, Barring the no uh, Nehru uh, when cartoon is like Puri. Uh, is that a not draw? If you look at the no mosque and the no true tall towers, what we see is, I mean, as uh, uh, Sadaran makes it very clear, uh, the, the, the line, uh, you know, over in the world. Yeah. And also, no true towers, uh, you have somebody like Spiderman coming up with a classic like this. So, is uh, uh, the breakdown good for cartooning or? A situation where there is no discontinuity, uh, they kind of create a situation where cartooning will become very stale. I don't see cartooning can also flourish when there is no discontinuity. That's my view. In quieter times, cartoons will, will develop in its own way. See, mouse, for instance, began with earlier work, which is a classic. So that is true. That was done you know, when there was no discontinuity in quieter times. Uh, another great work of uh, graphic fiction uh, done by Dr. Tesoka, Buddha story, many drawings. That was done in a very tranquil kind of setup. Of course, there are not huge underlying tension. There are not going so. I don't think that. I, I, don't, I don't think you should ask for this continuity. <laughs> 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 I like to manage with mundane stuff. <laughs> but yeah, there are also you know moments like uh, this run up to Vidhan Sabha elections in Delhi last elections. It was it was a hilarious moment, right? Everybody, as it were, had turned into a cartoonist, right? Sending jokes, etc. And we also sometimes crowdsource these jokes, which are floating around all over the internet. Now we don't. We have access to these things. No, this is a distinct possibility. Thank you for that. On a leave day, there are bright, very bright, you get very, very bright uh, SMSs, text messages, uh, tweets, and all that. It's a good source. There are gag writers, professional gag writers uh, in, the, in, the, in the West. The cartoons borrow gags. Ketchum himself has a team that, uh, that comes up with a, with a joke, a gag. The drawing is done by us. Yes, sir. Yeah, no. Yes, sir. No, no, no. no, no. It's being recorded. Yeah. Hello, sir. This is Shikha. Uh, as a very, uh, as an avid Indian Express reader, uh, I follow your cartoons almost regularly. And I notice them uh, I mean, quite deeply. So there was one uh, cartoon, one particular cartoon, when the Chinese president, Hillary and Jinping, oh, sorry. Xi Jinping, <laughs> when the Chinese President Xi Jinping uh, you know, visited India, 
and uh, it was it was a cartoon of uh, PM Modi, you know, over, uh, overpowering uh, uh, Xi Jinping, and uh, the word said, "Let's tackle the Japs together," something like that. So, uh, but I, uh, I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm quoting you correctly, but Japs was definitely used, and Japs is a word that's not, you know, that's that's not uh, very common, that's not used. Very often, yeah, in 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 some societies. Yeah. So how do you tackle with this, you know, conflict of usage of words? Because you know, at the end, what you represent is also, you know, supported by what you write as text. Right. So how do you tackle by, uh, tackle that? It's, it's a problem because political correctness has actually destroyed cartooning in the U.S. in the 1990s. Doesn't right. mean that uh, political correctness is not possible or not desirable. Uh, there is no formula to handle this. Try and be as sensitive as possible and, uh, and then ignore, uh, ignore any kind of details. Political correctness by anybody can not put in tomorrow, tomorrow You would have been able to use that had you not been an express? That I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have got away with this even the Hindu, which is a more gentle newspaper. But to more sensitive to more sensitive to politically correct uh, expression. So I love you in the cartoon. You see, you say G Jesus as an explanation. And I used it for the first time in the Hindu Hindu. Some father wrote to me from Pune or somewhere saying that you're a good cartoon, so why do you have to invoke Jesus? <laughs> you didn't get the point. <laughs> 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 You know why he is saying, he is not saying it is any bad intention. But this political conflict again is a weapon that, uh, that can be used by, by people who want to control. Also, it, it, it can represent stereotypes, which you should resist. The cartoons, I mean, in the sense that you get political uh, such cliches, like jabs can be a stereotype. That, I, I don't think a cartoon should use it in that, that sense. To do. It depends on, on the context. Right? Awesome. My question is uh, something, uh, something that has been put across to me a lot of times. Because I am someone who studies cartoon and because I am from Kerala. What's with Kerala and cartoon? <laughs> so uh, I, I went through this article by Abu Abraham which says there is an intrinsic sense of humor and satire among Malayalis and, and there is a general awareness of what happens around them. Is that just it, or is it into our genes to be part of it? Kerala may not have a single gene type. High political literacy, including high political literacy. So you have a lot of time, so you go and sit in tea shops. Tea shop is a very, very interesting institution in Kerala. Tea has got a bad name. I don't know the but the good old chai shops in Kerala was very interesting. Somebody studied the tea shop in Kerala. I didn't see my own visitor in the 60s. I studied the public space for tea shops. Broke caste tables. People gathered there. Better chatting about politics. Uh, that could be one reason. But I have, uh, I mean, when I was doing a, doing a kind of overview of Mandalam Kartu's seminar for an article, I was saying this. And I found that it is nothing but, but politics. Uh, it is not that Mal Malayalis had a political sense and then politics happened. I think politics happened then, when Malayalis developed a political sense. The most radical kind of politics happened, social work moments, plus political movements happened in Kerala. Roughly at the same time, cartoon was also emerging as a property. The, the printing was speaking the possibility, the possibility of printing, especially in places like Kono, going to the kind of surfeit of human magazines in the 30s and Shankar Gio, 20s, which I have not imagined. But 20 or 30 human rights is in a place called Kuala. Mm -hmm. I have one more question. Sorry, uh, 
because we are speaking about continuity and discontinuity, uh, this question becomes, I think, a bit more relevant. What or how does a cartoonist cope up when he moves from one newspaper to the other? He, does he maintain that continuity or does he change his style so as to give him a token mm -hmm. of hope? It is very a continuity that you have hired. Unless there are some sinister designs to take you out of the uh, and silence you. No, I could uh, give an example. Like uh, Anwar Ahmed, as I mentioned, he shifted from Dawn to Hindustan Times. Now that's a kind of uh, so the moving from one pole to. No, that is only when you look at it from, from, from here, here and now. I don't know how the spawn came alive. <laughs> Uh, see, down to this, uh, same thing happened in other words, of Samuel's cartoons. Samuel, Samuel, have you heard of Samuel who did, who was the father of Pocah Kappa, again in Malay, Malay. Malay is again like Japan, right? <laughs> 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 Samuel, 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 So, the, the Samuel, Samuel did cartoons for, for, I think, the beginning of times of India and then the Indian Express. Or, uh, this is Delhi. Same cartoons were stolen and published in, in, in Lahore newspaper called it This is Lahore. <laughs> but those were days when, when the country had just become, you know, the, the partition must have just happened. And these people had migrated. Uh, Anwar, Anwar came, came to this part of India. That was also India. Yeah, yeah came to this part of India. And, uh, those were also very, very, very tremendous times. Quite dramatic, even personally. And I know I've seen him in the film also. He's a cartoonist, a tremendous drawing skill. He's also a commercial artist. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, my friend here. Yeah. Uh, this is just, I and mean, I have been doing one of the observation and one of the questions. The first one is since the Ambedkar uh, cartoon issue came up, I'd just like to like share something that I found as part of my research. That, um, I mean, if you just do a simple uh, Google search of uh, cartoons, like with the keywords, like let's say cartoon, uh, Indira Gandhi, there are hundreds of things that will pop up. But if you say um, cartoon, uh, Ambedkar, and you, uh, I mean, in Google you have an option of, uh, I mean, restricting your time limit also. Suppose, so in case you do it uh, with the date until the controversy came out, you cannot find a single cartoon on Ambedkar. On the Google, on Google or uh, in online uh, portals, there's not a single cartoon that's available until the controversy came out. Like after that, a lot of cartoons came up uh, with this regarding to this controversy, but before that, there was not a single, not even the uh, uh, the Shankar cartoon that was available online. Uh, I mean, also with regard to that, the R. K. Lakshman uh, book that had come out with the sort of a, I mean, I don't remember the uh, title of the book, but I think it's a, it was a Penguin publication which had a history of India through cartoons. Um, so it's a collection of a lot of historical instances which had, in which there's not even a single cartoon with Ambedkar. Not even the constitution, that particular date is also not mentioned. So uh, I'm just a curious, I mean, I'm just curious as to whether uh, such figures are let out uh, from history by cartoonists also. And whether, like, as you said earlier, the revival of these figures through particular controversies. I mean, so now we have a lot of cartoons on Ambedkar on this particular issue, etc. So that's one thing I wanted to uh, say. The second is, uh, I mean, we talked a lot about, uh, I mean, American cartoonists and Indian cartoonists. I just wanted to know about the particular cartoon strip that you do in Indian Express. I mean, how did you come across that? Or what is, I mean, what is he called at least? Does he have a name? You're Something talking about the pocket cartoon. No, no, the Indian Express cartoon that... Yeah, uh, the, oh, the pocket cartoon. The pocket cartoon, yeah, the one uh, that, that you... That's called business as usual. Yeah. Uh, no, the name, okay, yeah, the name. There's no name. <laughs> <laughs> well, your first thing about Ambedkar, you see, it would be interesting to see, not what Lakshman did. Lakshman was in such a hard political cartoonist. His, his mainstay was the pocket cartoon, and he would do a, uh, do a sum up uh, on weekends, and then an occasional cartoon. He had a very, very interesting view of politics in Delhi. He viewed it from a distance. Uh, kind of typical middle class uh, metro, uh, kind of uh, metropolitan reaction to uh, the political capital. Uh, 
but you, you look at the, I'm sure there were plenty of uh, uh, cartoons which featured Ambedkar uh, in Aikri Bhai Shankar, Kapti, uh, Anwar uh, those that generation, there must have been many cartoons, and they, they were not inhibited. See, today you say Shankar was anti-Ambedkar, Shankar and Ambedkar must have been great friends person. They occupy probably the same kind of political figure. I'm not saying, uh, uh, I mean, somebody might have had some kind of bias, caste bias, etc. Bias of their non expressions, including language itself. I'm not absolving anybody of that, including cartoons. We are all biased. Sometimes we also don't realize our bias. We constantly correct and we go receive the correct your bias. But the point is that Ambedkar, Ambedkar was a person in power, he was a very powerful person, and he was doing fantastic things. In those days, he was a nation building, he was a major nation building, he did a lot of interesting politics. Uh, he shaped, he gave shape to the constitution. <coughs> so there must have been any number of cartoons on, on Ambedkar. I think I have myself seen plenty in the old back issues. Of, the availability and also the politics of the anthology is what I'm talking about. Ah, anthology is right. Google will go naturally. Yeah, yeah when, it, when it, uh, you know, till, till then they won't. Even Shankar may not have been there in Google. Yeah. Except the biography is sort of Yeah. Don't, don't spare me, Shankar. Don't spare me, Shankar is... Uh, For institution. <laughs> that that is never... Who said, said that, that, but it is also a film's name. Focused on Shankar's life. Okay, okay. Can we wait for a moment? Yeah. Because the mic is there. Thanks. Uh, I want to ask you more from the perspective of the craft of cartooning and a little bit of how you actually got into cartooning or how people who are cartoonists today have in a way started off. What is it that differentiates them with their art or the thinking that gets them into this very kind of verified space of political cartoon? I, I don't have a gentle answer because I, I can speak for myself. I got to do it as decent because I grew up in a Kerala highly <laughs> <laughs> political place. Jeans are not outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> political place. Uh, especially in the 70s, the campus was very, very good. And generally the, the campus then was interestingly far more aware of cartoons than, than Indian campus certainly. People who didn't draw cartoons, people who, uh, who had no intention of doing cartoons, they knew they followed cartoons. Really. Some of them knew the best of cartoons in the world. But I remember I got a, managed to get a copy of the Police for this price of conscience. Because I remember some book club. That book must have been read by a thousand people in two weeks in the college. It was in threats. I mean, people just laughed up because they were political. You know, so much of a cartoon, it's got a very powerful political uh, expression. So I, I think I could draw anything and I, and I couldn't write. So, <laughs> if you want to write about politics and draw about the choices, draw. <laughs> and again, poster art, you know, there is a graffiti. These are all, these are all cartoons. Cartoons are not, uh, cartoons are also public art. <coughs> we were talking largely about cartoons that appeared in newspapers in my existence, pre history. Uh, it is used as all posters or campaigns and so on. Cartoons have been used for campaigns in Kerala also, for elections. Emergency. Uh, anonymous cartoons. Thank you. My name is Leon Kirish. I'm from Jawaharlal Nehru University here in Delhi. Um, my question concerns the genealogy of the cartoon. Uh, now, you mentioned the United States as sort of an important hub and origin of this. Uh, isn't it the cartoon as such common property in the sense that it goes back much further? I'm not sure if you have touched upon this, uh, where people like McLuhan uh, would, uh, would situate the origin of the cartoon or the comic 
uh, back to the times of the cave drawing, which was essentially that, and he communicating a story and the relevant issue uh, in pictorial language. And from there it travels all the way through uh, prints uh, and tapestries of the Middle Ages um, to this day. So uh, does it not start much earlier than 1935 or uh, whatever that particular date is? Um, and either way, be it of American origin or much, much earlier and much more universal than that, um, what is it uh, that makes an Indian cartoon? Now, is there such a thing? Because if there is a Western uh, precursor or the cartoon is a universal language, then how is it adaptated like everything else is in this particular setting? Okay. Um, it, Disregarding the content, which is of course peculiar to the political and social scenario, but what is it that uh, differentiates uh, an Indian cartoon from an American one or from one from other, any other part of the world? Is there such a thing that this art form becomes indigenized, as it were? Okay. You, 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 I think, I, as I understood you, there are two parts to your question. One is the union. Right. How, how do you date it? I mean, do, you, do you set a date right. for the cartoon? Right. Uh, generally, you know, cartoon historians can be regarded the cartoon caricatures of sort of Italian origin and to the rest of Europe, and then came to the US. The sociology to, to, to cut, cut a long story short, the US itself was a, you know, a pop up. It came to the hub of migrants, migrants from many parts of Europe congregated in the U.S. They were semi-literate, half-literate. They were getting into some kind of city, metropolitan kind of culture, big cities were coming up. So the cartoon is an excellent expression to communicate with it. The newspapers found the cartoon very useful. Uh, there was some image, there was some text. They used, it was a New York dialogue, it was used to the New York dialect not high, high English. So the access, readers found easy access. And that, that's how it got accepted. It is this kind of chemistry that made uh, the US a major hub of comics. The comics became an industry. Because it was the newspapers you by units and all. So that is an easy thing. I think if you want, you can actually go back to the paper paintings. Go right back to the days when fire we was invented. I mean, it's a metaphor, but I'm saying you can go back to go back to the early drawings. Uh, any stylization has elements of projects. Uh, if you want to look at the Indian performing arts, cover uh, your and you hide the face partly. That is a universal beauty. In, in a sense, stylized Indian dance. And they don't make up the face in the, in the, in the way a uh, film maker or a, or a theater person would make up the face. That is to catch light. You make up the face very differently. You hide the face, part of the face, uh, various things. Because you also add very strong colors. This is actually, there are elements of caricature in this. There are all interesting uh, ways of looking at uh, the figures, dances, dance, etc. So the second part of the question, you, you were asking about indigenous. indigenous. One, one, one thing I already talked about was the number of characters that are both practicing cartoons to handle. If you have to handle 30, 40 characters in a year, your craft gets predetermined in a very different way. You can have too, too much simplification. If you're just using, you can't get too minimalist. If you're used to just three, four line, five line phase, five line phase you can't make with in India because you're handling a variety of characters. So the craft itself gets predetermined in a certain way. That stylization is that uh, Again, uh, if you look at reading the language cartoon, is that 
Even the politics is also reflected. In Marathi cartoons have been promoted largely by Thackeray. Paul Thackeray was a cartoonist. He may not like his politics, but he was a very powerful cartoonist who promoted the cartoon. So that kind of cartoons, even today if I look at the Marathi cartoons, I find that they, are, they lean more towards form poster-like expressions rather than subtle, subversive. The tone is very different. Okay, you just make a distinction between cartoon and illustration. Most people, lots of people, including some so-called cartoons, don't know the distinction between uh, funny illustration and a cartoon. So when you say uh, an ancient Greek painting was a cartoon, you are actually confusing yeah. the illustration to the cartoon. So you just you can, but, but uh, there, there are some complexities in the, if you look at the way, way a cave painting, you want to go back and look at the old illustration. There are two problems with it. One is that even the study of contemporary cartoons, including even the Shankar cartoon, which you will recall after 75 years, people now are saying that the cartoon has a knack of changing meanings. Meanings can shift. It's a very slightly complex thing. The cartoon over a period of time can acquire different meanings. So in that context, you, know, you can't dismiss even an illustration. An illustration might have been done to, to make a representation that is like a caricature. But it is not done, done in the kind of cartooning that we do today, which is to make a clear political point, political or social point, certainly an editorial point. In that sense, yeah, that, was, that is confusing. I mean, the, the illustration doesn't do that, clearly. Even some of the cartoons that we see today don't do that. They are merely descriptive. They don't focus, or they don't add up to any sharp comment. You see, Vijay and Abdul uh, reviewed the book. I mean, they were people perfect <coughs> Practice of the tone cartoon. There are cartoons you leave you in no doubt on whose side they are on an issue. That kind of a thing you will not see in a team painting. But, I mean, if you sort of look at it softly, broadly, uh, generously, it could be that it was making a certain representation to mock, the sheer mocking. That made it to the doubt you to give <laughs> But there's no justification in doing that today. Because you know, because you, you would always draw like, uh, like uh, I mean, uh, something like uh, as simple as the minister is a great drawing and say that this is great art, cartoon art today. I don't think that's acceptable. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. No, no. I would say that cartoon is a subset of art politics. Yeah. Or poster art. I mean, it is not used with many. It's, a, it's an eclectic art. It is not uh, used with, with, with cultures or rhetoric, uh, politics, art politics. Posters, graffiti, uh, underground comics. ಗ್ರಹಾಮೇಲ್ or uh, like uh, aeroplanes uh, right brothers as their fresco so that are also kind of part of our indian cartoon if you can say so probably you know this is uh, this is a cartoon this is going to come out of thin air see it is an upward drawing you need to look at uh, the temple uh, murals uh, what they, are, they were commissioned to do certain certain figures in the really they did certain figures on their own like they were brought cow somebody milking a cow, an everyday, everyday kind of, uh, kind of depiction. Most of these everyday depictions actually look like uh, uh, comic, 
సమాజవాది పార్టీ అండ్ ది ఇట్స్ లీడర్ ఇట్ డిడ్ ది కార్టూన్ అండ్ వి వర్ జస్ట్ టాకింగ్ అండ్ జస్ట్ వాచింగ్ ద టీవీ అండ్ దెన్ బోత్ ఆఫ్ us వాచ్ టుగెదర్ ది టీమ్ ట్విన్ టవర్స్ దట్ 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 డే యు నో ఐ ఐ కాంట్ ఫర్గెట్ దట్ ఈవినింగ్ యు నో హౌ ఏ కార్టూనిస్ట్ గోస్ ఆన్ ఇదర్ హి వాస్ వాచింగ్ అలోంగ్ విత్ మీ దట్ ఈవినింగ్ హిస్ రాజేంద్ర యు హ్ రాజేంద్ర హౌస్ అట్ ద he naturally he got a phone call from his office and he said that you know and not a cartoon factory to produce it select the art like that but he was so restless uh, and you know just watching it that after 5 10 minutes he he was walking restlessly then he went to a bath then came back and in 10 minutes time he did his cartoon and i was witnessing the entire um, event and that day he did the boy probably without even a face throwing a paper rock at all the big powers i i do not know that i'll ask a question why the terror was a boy why the attack was a paper rock at there then you know that was his immediate uh, response to that major event Thank you. 